Can J.P. Crawford do it again with the bat? Will Jorge Polanco finally end the Mariners' stretch of disappointing second base acquisitions? We'll discuss that and more in our middle infield preview coming up here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. Actually, l- let me put on my radio voice here. It is Tuesday, March 12, 2024. This is Tiny and Gonzalez and Colby Batnode for the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by Prize Picks. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports, of course. PrizePicks.com slash locked on MLB. Use the promo code locked on MLB. That's all lowercase for a first deposit match up to $100. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. We're having fun today. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link, as well as our social accounts, is in the description of this episode. And we are continuing our position preview series with a look at the Mariners' middle infield. And we've got to start here with the captain jp crawford who's of course coming off a career year at the plate we all know the story about driveline 266 380 438 that's a 134 wrc plus this past season 4.9 f4 19 homers that's 10 more than his previous career high but the question here is can he do it again or at least something similar because look other than 2023 JP was at best a league average bat. So Colby, what do you think? First of all, I think that according to MLB on Fox, JP Crawford has only ever been a league average bat uh, because apparently he's not one of the 10 best shortstops in baseball. I mean, according to MLB on Fox, does JP Crawford even exist? Apparently not because they thought Ellie De La Cruz was more deserving of being on the top 10 list. Which... Look, Ellie's, Ellie's really fun. I like Ellie a lot. I think Ellie will be really good one day, but Mm -hmm. Ellie's coming off of an he's coming off of an eighty four WRC plus season. JP Crawford literally fifty percent better. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah. uh, So yeah, can JP Crawford do it again? You sure hope so, but I think expecting a guy to repeat a one thirty WRC plus season before they've done it a couple times is, is probably asking a bit much. And, and, you know, JP was a what top 15 hitter in all base or in the American league, at least last year yep. by WRC plus. So I don't think that that's realistic to expect or, or project him to, to repeat exactly that. Uh, but I also don't think it's fair, realistic or whatever, however you want to phrase it to project him to be a, league average ish hitter again, just barely, you know, cracking 100. Uh, I don't think that's fair either. JP Crawford's made tangible, noticeable changes to his swing, to his setup, to his bat speed. He's getting to, you know, some raw power that's always been there on the pole side. And, and, you know, I, I, I think that expecting JP Crawford to be, you know, between 110 and 120 is, is totally reasonable in, in the WRC plus department. So, uh, you know, can he get all the way back to 130? Probably not. I kind of doubt he's going to run a 390 on base again. Uh, but uh, I, I do think that the power is somewhat legitimate. I, I don't know. If, um, I would be expecting 20 home runs a year uh, going forward. But I, I do think that you're going to see more pop. Uh, we know JP is going to draw walks. It, it's just a matter of how many walks is he going to, going to draw. Um, and, you know, it, it, he's hitting the ball with authority more to his pull mm-hmm. side. So we'll see. There might be more hits. Uh, for JP. So it's possible the average goes up a little bit too. So do I think a 130, what is it, 135 WRC plus, whatever it was? Uh, do I think that's repeatable? It could be, but I wouldn't bet on it. But what but if you ask me, is it more likely he goes back to 2022 JP or 2023 JP? I would bet heavily that it's much more likely he's closer to 2023 JP again than he goes okay. back to what he was a couple of years ago. Steamer projects him to hit 259 355 391 that's a 115 wrc plus i think that's yeah. close ish to where i'm at with jp yeah. going into the season i think it's probably going to be yeah i i think that's probably that's probably right 
uh, maybe like 120 WRC plus. I don't think he's going to be a sub 110 guy again. I, I think the the changes that he's made are, are legitimate. I think he is going to hit for more power. I, I don't know if I'm on board with him slugging sub 400. I, I think he's going to slug over 400. It might only be slightly above 400, but I'm, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with the three nine because I think it, at the very least he's going to hit doubles. And it does appear that he's also made another small tweak. He's not wrapping the bat at the top at all no uh really at all this spring and so uh we'll see if that makes any kind of a difference but yeah it's it's a much quicker uh swing than it was um you know two years ago when he had the long bat wrap and it just kind of slow through the zone type of uh swing uh which led him to have almost no power now it's a it's a quicker swing it's 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 a controlled swing still which is an important part of the game for jp crawford but yeah he's going to walk 10 percent of the time he's going to strike out 20 ish percent of the time he's going to go 260 you know 350 to 370 probably in there and 400 uh or higher slug i i feel pretty confident that jp is going to be good this year uh is he going to be elite like he was last year i sure hope so but you know the Mariners don't need him to be. The Mariners are much better positioned to absorb just you know good JP Crawford uh, than they were last year when they really needed elite JP Crawford and they happened to get it. Yeah. So last year it was 19 homers, 35 doubles. Maybe this year it's like 14 homers and 40 doubles. Right. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm really looking forward to watching this year though? JP Crawford cut the bases. It's one of the best sights in all of baseball. It's so smooth. It really is. It, it, Especially it when is. he loses the helmet. Uh, and then yeah. the flow the flow gets going. Dude, it's great. Yeah. Uh, JP Crawford, like, it's one of those things like Javier Baez tags where you're just like. Right, mm. yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like, there's no way to quantify it, really. But it, you just watch it and you're just like, oh, yep. Mm. Yeah. yeah it it's just, just one of those little things that you're just like watching JP cut second as he goes to third. You're just like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's right yeah. that's how you do it yeah jp okay. cutting the bases is up there with like left-handed cal raleigh hitting an absolute <laughs> dog shot you know like yeah it's the barry zito curveball you're just right. like just right. aesthetically you're like mm, yep yeah 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 that Absolutely. looks right so uh any other thoughts on jp before we uh move along here just that the mariners need him uh yeah. to be you know out there 145 times a year. So, uh, you know, it's JP's the captain, uh, whether the mayors ever want to make that official or not. He is, I don't think anybody's debating that, Put the C on his chest, just do Why it. Not? It might distract just... from the ugliness going on on the back. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah, JP Crawford, definitely the captain of this team. And, and, you know, uh, he carries a lot of weight in the clubhouse and his leadership role gets bigger and bigger every year. So, uh, yeah, JP is incredibly important to the Mariners, and he's also just an incredibly easy dude to root for. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, JP is is awesome. Uh, you give me a club with twenty six JPs, I'll I'll give you a World Series title in a heartbeat. So, um, we'll see exactly what the production looks like this year, but I would not bet against JP Crawford. Yeah, uh, JP is like a fool's errand. Yeah, JP is absolutely the type of dude that you need on your team uh, to win a championship. Right? He's the he's the glue guy right you hear it in every sport everyone talks about having that glue guy and uh mm-hmm. jp even if it is kind of a uh, a year of regression for him off uh offensively he's still such an important part of that ball club and he's mm-hmm. still going to contribute in a lot of ways that we're not even going to see as fans right if julio rodriguez is king griffey jr then right. jp crawford is jay buner sure like just really good player means a lot in the clubhouse and we won't ever actually be able to quantify that. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, JP Crawford, incredibly important part of this club. And I sure I'm glad that he's here. So it's time to talk about arguably the biggest addition the mayor has made this off season. That's Jorge Polanco in just a moment. But first a reminder, this episode of the locked on Mariners podcast is brought to you by prize picks. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there is no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Conference tournaments are here, which means the biggest moments in college basketball are getting closer. Be a part of the action on Prize Picks for both men's and women's college basketball. 
And tonight in the pros, I'm taking Chet Holmgren more than 15 and a half points against the Pacers and Malik Monk more than 14 and a half points against the Bucks. Download the app today and use the promo code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That is promo code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen. And as, oh God, the music is back. As a reminder, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is we need here better for you. Music. Yeah, we, we really do. Mm-hmm. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, like we talked about yesterday, we have um, kind of a game plan, a little bit of what we're going to be doing here on the show uh, for the next couple of weeks leading up to opening day. Uh, so, Colby, tell us a bit more about that. Sure. So, uh, you know, I think this year's schedule is going to be roughly the same as last year's schedule as we ramp up towards opening day and kind of begin our usual coverage of, you know, just talking about the game the other night and, and what to look forward to today and and you know, the just kind of the standard ins and outs of daily, the gr- daily grind of Mariners baseball. So that'll start on opening day. But before then, you know, we're going to do a lot of prediction stuff, like a lot of the 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 type of like, honestly, like like sports radio show segments uh, mm. for shows. So uh, we have a couple Mondays left before opening day. And obviously those will be mailbag Mondays. And that trend will continue into the season. Mailbag Mondays is going to be around for a long Ever. time. We like, we like, yeah, we like talking to you guys. We like uh, hearing what you're thinking about. And also we don't have to plan that show to be perfectly honest. And that's a nice bonus. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we just answer your guys' question. That's going to be back every Monday, but we have a couple more before opening day. And obviously the type of questions will change a little bit once we get into the season. Right. Um, we're also planning on doing uh, our standard bold prediction episode, mm-hmm. our MLB award slash, you know, divisional winner, like just a standard prediction episode. Uh, we have team predictions. Who's going to be the team Cy Young? Who's going to be the team MVP? All that stuff. Uh, we have, of course, our flag player episode coming up in, in the next week or so, uh, where Ty and I will each pick five players that we are claiming as, you know, our guys for the upcoming season, however you want to phrase that. Uh, it's not really a competition yet. Somehow we turn it into one every year and then we completely That's forget right. the results. Yeah, like by May. So, look, um, we have enough of you at this point now. Eleven thousand plus of you. Mm-hmm. Can one of you keep track for us? <laughs> just one. Of, just one of you. Sure. So yeah, <laughs> it'll be. We'll do like. Um, we'll do swing players. We'll do breakout players. We'll do stuff like that. It's just going to be very basic. A lot of list over the mm-hmm. next few weeks, but the standards. Yes, we will be doing bold predictions. We'll be doing MLB. You know, season predictions. We'll be doing. Uh, you know, we'll be doing flag players. It's going to be a lot of stuff like that. So uh, yep. it should be fun. It's going to be a lot of like proclamations will be made over the next, you know, yeah. 10 days or so yeah. as we get ready for opening day. Most of them will be incorrect because they'll be coming from Ty because Ty mm-hmm. makes proclamations. I make accurate predictions. I do share a birthday with Nostradamus after all. That is true. You can actually fact check that yeah but we're gonna be uh, remember i'm not wrong i'm early we're gonna be we're gonna be standing on business though can you do that in sign light there you go yeah or wait i can do this i think it was it was was this this and then i think that's how he did it whatever better be careful (laughs) i might have done something very offensive just now and i apologize that's why i stuck to ahoy boat people right uh also the uh the content creator spotlight is not going anywhere we're just going to be dropping it on a different day now uh it's going to be a bonus episode on uh saturdays now uh not every saturday but if there's going to be one it's going to drop on a saturday uh this upcoming saturday we got jay's trotten podcast joining us so look forward to that so jorge polanco Arguably the Mariners' biggest acquisition of the offseason in that trade with the Twins. They sent four players to Minnesota for Polanco. Uh, they could potentially have Polanco for, for two years if they end up picking, that up, uh, picking up that option next year. But that's, of course, going to require Polanco being 
pretty good this year. So the question that I asked in the cold open, I'm going to ask you it here now. Do you think Polanco is the guy that's going to finally break? I don't know. I don't like to throw the curse word around, but the the curse of the Mariners second base position since Robinson Cadeau was traded. It's really only been a problem for like two years. So I don't know that qualifies as a curse. Uh, second of all, years. second of all, Jorge Polanco is hitting 500 this spring. So clearly the answer is yes. Right, like, right, right. You just don't roll out of bed and hit 500. Okay. Against double a pitching when you're a 31 year old, you know, established big leaguer. All so, right. Col- Colby, Colby, real quick. Tell me a good Mariners second baseman since 2018. Dylan Moore, 2020. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> nice right, but, try, Mister. <laughs> but we don't we don't count that season though. Oh, we absolutely do. That season didn't exist. It wasn't real. Oh, Sorry, Kyle Lewis. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh so yeah, anyways, score one for me. Doesn't fit uh, my narrative, so it doesn't exist. Like how very, you know, Seahawks Twitter of you. Anyway, so uh <laughs> Blanco, I feel This episode good. is wild today. <laughs> it is. It's, who knows where this is gonna go? This is like this a CTZ gonna... episode. <laughs> Except for still somehow much more cleaned up. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. anyways, Polanco, I think for a year, he'll be fine. Like, I, I don't expect yeah. much from him defensively, but I also don't think he's their long-term second baseman. And I, by long-term, I mean beyond this year. Mm. Like, I think there's a good chance he's back next year at his salary. Uh, it's still very reasonable. And I feel pretty confident that he's going to produce. It's, it's Most of my questions about Polanco are, you know, a can he handle second base defensively, and B can he stay on the field? Uh, so the Mariners right. have already made it pretty clear that they think Polanco's issues staying on the field the last couple of years have been flukes. But we'll see if they're right or not. But uh, yeah, I, I feel reasonably comfortable that he's going to produce. I, I think that he's the type of hitter that you know will perform quite well at uh, T-Mobile Park. Uh, it certainly has some pull power, and, and he doesn't hit a ton of fly balls up the middle. So. Uh, you know, it's definitely a profile that plays pretty well. So I think Polanco is going to have a good year. Uh, be really hard not to be significantly better than Mariner second baseman last year who put up a 75 WRC plus. So if he's only a 100 WRC plus just league average, he's a 25% uh, improvement over what the Mariners had last year. And I think there's a pretty safe bet that he's going to be better than a 100 WRC plus. So yeah, I feel pretty confident about Polanco producing how often, You'll be available to produce is kind of the question as it is with a lot of, uh, you know, the mayor's acquisitions uh, this, this winter. So uh-huh. I feel pretty good about Polanco. I, I think he's probably going to be fine. Uh, he's going to help the Mariners at second base this year, next year, assuming that he's still around, assuming that he hits well enough to be around. I think he's probably the answer at third base because I think Cole young has uh-huh. pretty, yeah. I mean, a lot can happen between now and, and, you know, a year from now. But I feel like Cole Young has put himself in a really good position to be on the opening day roster next year as the uh, second baseman. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if Young's even in the organization next year. But I do feel like uh, Polanco is the appropriate bridge uh, to uh-huh. to hand the ball off to uh, to Cole Young in twenty twenty four or twenty twenty five rather. Uh, uh-huh. And I think he'll do more. He'll be more than capable of playing a good second base this year. So Polanco this past year, just 80 games played, missed a lot of time in the first half of the season. 255, 335, 454. It's a 118 WRC plus. It was worth just one and a half wins, but again, missed a lot of time. Um, 14 homers, uh, 48 RBI, 25.7% K rate, uh, 10.5% walk rate. Uh, the K rate has gone up each of the last three years, which is a little bit of a concern. Uh, it was mm-hmm. 15 and a half in 2020, then went up to 18.3 in 2021, 21.3 in 2022, and then 25.7 uh, this past year, like I mentioned. Uh, but his career K rate is only 18.2 in spite of those uh, last three years, and really just the last two years where he's been uh, north of 20% in the strikeout department. But even 25.7% of the time, if you're hitting homers, if you're walking a lot, um, you can live with that. And really here, the 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 biggest boon potentially for the Mariners with adding Polanco is that he gives you power output or the potential for power output that you typically don't get at second base. This is a guy that's hit 30 plus home runs in a season before just a couple of years ago. You know, again, in just 80 games played this past year, he hit 14 
So even if you don't necessarily get the over the wall output that you necessarily want at third base from Luis Arias and, and Josh Rojas, Polanco should help make up for that a bit uh, over at second base. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to talk about what else is behind Polanco and Crawford that includes Rojas and Arias who can also play uh, some second base, even a little shortstop uh, if need be. Uh, and some other guys behind those guys in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Lockdown Mariners podcast is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as a Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV as soon as possible. Fire TV also recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports from March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots of more not to mention great news entertainment gaming travel and cooking videos as well check out fire tv channels on fire tv and alexa devices and if you haven't checked out fire tv channels you should trust me on this to learn more visit amazon.com slash locked on fire tv and you're listening to the locked on Mariners podcast oh god thank you so much for making us your first listen oh, this, this one is gross this one sounds gross <laughs> you sound gross right um so let's talk about what else the Mariners have in the middle infield behind polanco behind jp and then even you know rojas and and arias who might slot over there from time to time uh so that includes of course dylan moore uh then there's guys like sam Haggerty, maybe even though they more so view him as an outfielder as a corner outfielder uh Samad Taylor, who they brought in in that trade that you and I both really liked uh, with the Royals. How, how do you feel about this whole uh, situation, uh, the depth? Yeah, they're pretty reasonably covered. Um, you know, it's it's not like they have a all-star shortstop playing third base, uh, you know, so you, you can't be like, oh, well, if JP gets hurt, you just slide Willie Adamas over and it's like nothing ever happened. So you can't do that. But Urias has played plenty of shortstop at the big leagues, at the big league level. He's fine there. Uh, particularly in a pinch. Uh, Josh Rojas is a natural shortstop. Uh, He could probably handle it if he absolutely needed to, but Dylan Moore is the primary backup here. He'll get most of the reps at short if something happens to JP. Um, And and you're fine with that. Like you, you trust Dylan Moore. Uh, You you pretty much know what you're going to get from him. Uh, The bat is not one that you should play every day. He'll run into some homers. He'll draw some walks and the rest of the time he'll strike out and look absolutely awful at the plate. And defensively, he'll make the routine plays. Like, I don't think you really want to count on Dylan Moore to make anything spectacular happen, you know, defensively, but uh, he'll, you certainly are okay if, if, you know, a routine grounder said to him, you feel pretty confident that it's going to be an out. So uh, they're pretty well, uh, you know, managing the shortstop. Cole Young can play shortstop if they need him to, uh, mm-hmm. absolutely. But that's more of a, you know, let's see where he's at in July and August before we start to seriously consider him um, as a call up. And then, you know, of course, there's Ryan Bliss. Who uh, you didn't mention? Uh, Bliss can play short. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. he is. Uh, yeah, Bliss is plenty good at shortstop. Uh, so the Mariners are actually pretty well covered. Uh, if JP has to miss, you know, a couple weeks, you know, knock on wood, but uh, they're pretty well covered there. And by extension, that means they're pretty well covered at second base. Uh, Urias can play second base. Rojas is actually really good at second base. If you like outs above average as your defensive metric of choice, he was like plus six in August and September at second base, which is elite. Like. He was as good at second base in two months as Matt Chapman was at third base in the entire year, according to outs above average. So, you know, eh, you know what we say about defensive metrics. Don't take them as the gospel, but when they uh, support our narrative. Sure. Great. Yeah. Yeah, We can be like Seahawks Twitter too. So yes, uh, the Mariners are actually pretty well covered there. Now it's not, they're, they're better covered at second because Samad Taylor factors in at second base uh, you know, Sam Haggerty factors in at second base a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, and to me, Taylor to me is a really interesting guy. Um, yep. I think most years he would have a good shot of making this team. 
but because you have Rojas, because you have Urias, and because you have Dylan Moore as established big leaguers, it just it's he's just not going to crack this roster unless there's a trade or an injury in the next few weeks. So uh, you feel pretty good about Taylor. Uh, Ryan Bliss has certainly shown some things this spring, and and yep. he's going to, in theory, he should get a shot uh, or crack at the big leagues at some point this year. He'll start the year in Tacoma. Hmm. So the Mariners are actually very well covered at shortstop and second base. They have a couple of guys who could play both. If need be, they have um, kind of, you know, the guys who you need them to be the everyday guy for a couple of weeks. They can certainly handle that. So uh, the Mariners depth in this, in this, and I mean like actual major league depth at this position group, middle infield is actually pretty darn good. So mm-hmm. they're, they're pretty well situated now. If JP, you know, has to miss four months, like, yeah, obviously that gets dicey. Uh, right. Same goes for Polanco. But if you're just covering, you know, to give a guy a rest day or the guy has to go on the 10 day IL because you know, you shin splint yeah. or whatever, like you're going to be fine. Like you yeah. will survive with these guys. They have enough guys that you can have a, a fluid rotation here. Like if you know what you described happens again, if they, they lose JP for the whole season or, you know, four months or whatever, knock on wood. Uh, that's a different story because I mean you're just you're losing one of your best players. So it doesn't really matter how much depth you have. You're losing right. one of the best players, you know, in the entire league, right? At mm-hmm. that position. So uh despite what MLB on Fox says. Uh <laughs> I, I can't let that go. I'm sorry. Uh so yeah, I you know, this is kind of what we talked about leading up to doing this preview is you know, they they went out and they got themselves a, a little too much, right? They already have, you know, Ryan Bliss, who's another option that they're really excited about. But let's also get Samad Taylor, right? And let's mm-hmm. add him on top of Sam Haggerty. And also we got Cole Young potentially, you know, coming up at some point this year as well. Like, you know, there comes a point, and look, this is not how it's going to end up because injuries are going to happen. Some guys are not going to perform the way you want them to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a non-zero chance that you get to a point here where like, how do I get Cole Young on the roster? How do I get Ryan Bliss on the roster? How do I get, you know, some mod Taylor on the roster? Right. You know, mm-hmm. and, and that's a good thing to have. That's a really good thing to have. Um, right. So the, the Mariners are in the best position, I would say just from a pure depth standpoint, not overall, not big picture, but from a pure depth standpoint in the best position they've been in since Jerry DePoto took over in their middle infield. Uh, Because they just have options on options of options of high floor guys, some high upside guys, and then some in between. Sure. Maybe the starting duo is not quite as good as Segura and Cano uh, when Jerry first got here, but certainly they have a lot more options in their their back pocket. Like they have better than Sean O'Malley. No offense to Sean. Um, you know, they have, yep. Mm-hmm. I was there. That was awesome. Oh. Uh, you know, they have better options than Andrew Romine, right? Like they're not so desperate that they're going to yeah. keep Andrew Romine on the roster all year. Uh, offense to Andrew Romine. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, the Mariners are in really good shape from, you know, in a depth perspective overall, uh, probably a little less ceiling, uh, on the, uh, on the top end than the Segura Cano. Yeah. Uh, but certainly the the back end is much better and, and they're much more prepared to handle the surprise Robinson Cano 80 game suspension. Uh, they're much more they're in much better shape to handle that than they were when that happened five years ago, six years ago. So, yeah, uh, yeah I, I think the Mariners, I feel pretty confident about this this group, uh, this position group. I feel like it's a good blend of skill sets and, and depth and and upside and floor. So I, I think, you know, if you're grading this this group of players i think it's probably b plus just because you're a little concerned about the defense right and like, when when you have this step too it allows you to put guys in better positions to succeed mm-hmm. right it it allows you to not, spots. yeah it allows you to not have to force guys into being something more than they are like they've had to do with dylan moore you know that's a guy that i look at that could potentially benefit from the depth that the mariners have built and getting him better matchups over the course of the year um mm-hmm. I, I think this is again it's a really fluid and healthy rotation that they they can potentially have here that's going to help everyone right so um yeah i i really like what they they've done in this particular area of the roster and uh you know it's and especially you know topping everything off with jorge polanco and all-star second baseman 
this off season of all off seasons too, where second base options were very, very, very limited. And Polanco was the best guy that was feasibly available out there. And you were able to go out and get him. And you added more depth behind him on top of what you already had brought in with bliss, uh, you know, at the deadline and then having someone like Sam Haggerty, it's just, it's really good work by, by Jerry DePoto and Justin Hollander. So I applaud them for what they've done here, uh, in the middle infield. And I think it's going to pay dividends for the Mariners this season. So any closing Great. thoughts before we get out of here? Put the captain's crest on JP Crawford's Jersey. Do it, do it. Do it. It's incredibly easy to do. It creates yeah. a ton of hype before the season, a yeah. lot of goodwill. Like it's such a no brainer. It is yeah. such a no brainer, which is why there's a 0% chance it'll happen. Right. Right. Is that who, whose decision is that? Is that the clubhouse? Is that Scott's service? Is that, I would assume it would be the player's decision. Right. Yeah. Like it should be. It should right. be. Right. I don't know how like, but like, how does, never how does that, but how does that topic even get brought up? You know, I don't know. Like JP going to bring it up. So how about you just give me that C? And <laughs> right. Like, right. Ugh. I mean, right. will fanatics even allow their work to be desecrated by something that would look good? Yeah. We'll, no, we'll have to see if, uh, if Salvador Perez still has it. Oh uh, yeah. 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 Captains aren't a thing really that much anymore. Uh, in, in major league baseball they should be though. They should be. They should be, but also like you don't necessarily have to like. You don't have to have one. I mean, like in hockey, not every team has a captain. They have alternates or whatever, like the guys with the A on their jersey. But like, that's just weird. That's that's weird. But like, they should just all be captains. Like the, you can have more like, than one captain. Like the Kraken don't have a captain right now. They don't have a guy wearing a C on their chest. That must be why they suck. Um, sorry, they're mid, very very mid. Yeah, they're mid. Uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I don't know what the process would be. The Mariners have never had one. So uh, never an official uh, captain. So maybe that's just something that they don't ever want to do, but also it makes so much sense to have a captain on a team named the Mariners. Like I, right. Right. I mean, like S- Scott service is technically at the helm, but like I, I, I put the C please. on, on JP's chest, put the C captain. on JP's chest, please just do mm-hmm. it. It would be sick. It would be so sick. Everybody has to address JP. They have to ahoy, Captain. Ahoy, <laughs> Captain. Yep. You got. You got to learn Captain ASL. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> First, I'm going to look for more music. Yeah, we we need more music, more royalty free music, so we don't get yes. sued and we absolutely do. The our corporate overlords don't uh, mm-hmm. send us emails. That's going to do it for our show. There it is again. Thank you so much for joining us. Actually, let me let me do the voice. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Tide Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Tide Gonzalez. Colby at CPAT11. That's CPAT11. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you again for making us your first listen. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day. and We'll see you next time. Peace. Crazy Ira, clean your room.